Hey everyone, today I'm out flying my HX100 SE. I showed this on the channel a few months ago, uh, but I've made a bunch of improvements since then. It's now just 26 grams dry weight, uh, 33 grams all up weight with a battery like this. Uh, and it gets like three minutes of pretty hard ripping. It'll get close to nine minutes if I put a bigger battery on it and fly gentle. So I've been having a lot of fun with this. Uh, I flew it a bunch when it first came out, but then I started flying that three inch 1S instead because I like that even better. Uh, but you probably know I got the three inch stuck in a tree. So I decided I'd take another look at this and see if I could make it even better. Uh, if you want to see what I did to this and how I think it compares to the three inch, I'll show you that in just a minute. And I'll show you what I'm doing to replace that three inch too. Uh, but first, here's some flight footage right here in my backyard. So here's the build up close. Again, this is the HX100 SE from Beta FPV. It was a bind and fly drone when I got it. Uh, it had this black Beta FPV canopy on there, but I made some changes and I reduced the weight and that's what I want to show you today. Um, I got it down to about 26 grams dry weight from 29 grams, so about three grams lighter. And that is definitely significant on a build this size, although it's not a game changer. Uh, this thing flew really nicely right out of the box uh, and I'm even flying the original tune. Here you can see the weight as I've been flying it. It's about 25.8 grams. And when you add one of these batteries, about 34 grams all up weight. So that low weight is what gives it that agility. And these batteries are actually plenty. I get uh, three to three and a half minutes of the kind of flying that you just saw with one of these batteries. Um, sometimes I might bump up to a 450 if I want some longer flight time. That's gonna bring the weight up to 38.3 grams. And these fly for a long time, like four, four and a half minutes. And you can even go longer with these, although I don't choose to. 
Uh, but one time I did put this in just to see how long I could last. I flew really gentle and I got eight minutes and 40 seconds, which feels like forever when you're flying one of these things. Um, so that's longer than I need for me. The point of these builds is the lightweight and agility. So I like to use the smaller batteries, but if you wanted to go crazy and go over nine minutes, uh, you could do that if you wanted to. The big question in my mind, of course, was how would this compare to that 3-inch 1S uh, that I got used to flying? Uh, you can check out that video later if you haven't already. That's the one that I got stuck in a tree, uh, but it was pretty sweet. It was about 33 grams dry weight, 46 grams uh, with my preferred battery, and so that made it about 20% heavier than this, uh, but 3-inch props... They don't look that much bigger, but they actually have over 50% more disc area. So the power to weight ratio on the three inch was definitely higher. It definitely had more float, uh, but they both fly really well. I liked that three inch 1S so much that I've already started uh, building a replacement for it. I just haven't had time to finish. This is another 1.5 millimeter thick uh, baby tooth frame, but this time I've got the Flywoo uh, 1202.5 motors. I figured I'd give these motors a try this time, see how they do. So I'm looking forward to this build. So in comparing these two builds, I'd say overall they're both super, super fun. Uh, they're both really light and quiet and agile. You can fly it pretty much anywhere and no one's going to be intimidated. So I like these builds for the same reason. Uh, but differences between the two, I'd say the two and a half inch drone is definitely... Uh, it feels faster. I don't think it is faster, but it feels faster because it kind of darts around. This one kind of glides around and floats around a little bit more. Um, and that's especially noticeable in a dive. Diving through those trees, this thing falls really fast, uh, which is both exciting and also kind of alarming. Whereas this one, if you're actually pointing down with the props like this and the props are spinning slow, uh, there's so much disc area and it's so light that it just kind of floats down uh, more slowly. So that gives this one, I think, a more graceful feel. Um, and this one is more kind of zipping around. Regarding the modifications that I made, uh, let me give you a quick rundown of that. Um, I like to build and tinker, and I think this stuff is interesting. So the most obvious change is the canopy. Of course, it had that black beta FPV canopy, but I replaced it. This is the B-Brain V2. While I was at it, I also replaced the camera, uh, Runcam Nano 3. I use that camera because it has a larger sensor and it has a pretty nice image. And also, importantly, it fits right in this canopy. Uh, so I did that. I also replaced the video transmitter. I didn't really need to do that, but it's got a nameless RC Nano in here now, uh, which goes to 200 milliwatt. Uh, it can actually go all the way to 400, but I never use it that way. Um, I also direct soldered the motor wires, uh, took the plugs off, so that saved a little bit of weight. And I replaced these screws. These are now Rennie screws in here. And the front screw I can actually adjust to adjust the up tilt of the camera. So you can see I've got it cranked up a little bit there. And then I made custom antennas. This is the RX antenna, and then this one is the video antenna. That was really quick. If you want more detail on those kind of mods, uh, check out that video that I made on the three inch 1S build because it's a lot of the same stuff and I went into more detail there. Oh, one other thing, uh, you'll see the USB is pointing up because I did flip the flight controller. Um, the USB pointing up would be a problem with the old canopy, but here it's still pretty easy to get to. And the reason I did that is because this USB used to stick down through the frame and it would kind of press on the battery. Actually, let me back up. Uh, on the original drone, the USB was down here, but it wasn't actually pushing on the battery because the original drone had this foam and then this rubber pad in the middle here, and that was actually providing enough space for the battery so that the battery wasn't really uh, hitting the USB too badly. But I took this out to save weight, and so that's why I ended up flipping the USB up here. You'll see what I did to replace it. Um, I took a little bit of this foam, and I stuck it on these two ends, and these screws are helping to hold it in and then I replaced this strap. The original strap uh, was like this. It was a fine strap for a larger battery, but just way too big uh, to seal on one of these, and it ended up being loose pretty much all the time. So this is just a Velcro cable tie um, that I adjusted to an appropriate length. Um, I can adjust it for different batteries, but if I keep using the same size battery, I don't actually have to change anything at all. I can just stick this battery in here. You can see it hits the foam, and then if I push down like this to compress against the foam, I can get it in place, and it's actually pretty secure. Uh, I am way happier with this mounting uh, than with the original. I actually think this black bait FPV canopy looked pretty cool on here. It's kind of a smooth, sleek look, and it hides all of the wires, which makes it look pretty clean. Uh, so why did I change it to this one? 
These canopies are not super durable, but to my surprise, this one actually never broke. I'm pretty sure this is the original canopy that I got on this build. Um, I think having the low weight helps, but it was also just a bunch of luck. Uh, so that wasn't actually the problem. The actual problem was the camera sticks through here like this, and it would often get bashed so that the camera is kind of inside the canopy like this, and then I would have to push it back out like that because it's only anchored on the two sides. Uh, so that was the biggest frustration with this canopy, but I also wanted to save a little bit of weight. These Beta FPV canopies are actually pretty light, but the main weight actually comes from this rubber part that holds the camera inside of the canopy. So that is heavier than one of these, uh, which serves as a canopy and also holds the camera. Now to be fair, Beta FPV does have a newer canopy design. This is a thicker, stronger material, and the camera mount, the camera mounts into this and it goes up into there into those screws and so this does not need one of those rubber mounts inside the canopy it also holds the camera and so that makes it uh, considerably stronger and lighter than those old canopies and so i considered using one of these the reason i didn't is because it has a fixed up tilt on the camera i'm not exactly sure what that angle is but it wasn't enough for me so i wanted more up tilt so that's about it. I hope you find this stuff to be as interesting as I do. I'm building and tinkering all the time and learning new stuff all the time, so it's fun to be able to share some of that with you. If that's something you appreciate, then feel free to like and subscribe. If you're looking for this drone or any of these parts, I'll try to put some of those links down in the video description. And of course, let me know if you have any questions. Also, if you have a favorite 65 millimeter push-on prop, uh, let me know what that is. These are the Who Cares props from Pyrodrone. I'm not even sure you can get these anymore, uh, but they're really light, and that's why I was using them on here. Also, I did manage to damage the carbon on this frame, and so it still flies, but I'll be on the lookout for a replacement. If you have a suggestion of an ultralight frame for this size, uh, let me know. Let's talk about that down in the comments below. Um, until next time, be safe, keep flying, uh, and have fun out there.